All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today in my new bedroom, because apparently a couple of my video intros weren't that funny. So, yeah, I'm in the shop, and uh, it's been fun. It's been fun, you know. I, I needed some quality time by myself to to think. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we uh, we actually put the mattress here because our house. <clears throat> Miles wise isn't that far away, but time wise it's kind of a nuisance because uh, we got to go through Pine City, and so when when checking cows during the bad weather, it just was so much more simple just to sleep here under the infrared heater. I will tell you what, sleeping under an infrared heater and then going home to forced air, you are like, what the crap? How do we not have infrared in our households? Um, so we just slept up here. The wife could get up every couple hours run out to the pasture, check and come back. And then that allowed me to be able to sleep and have a normal functioning day. Um, and so, yeah, but we got the 40, <clears throat> the cab is off. And so let's look at what it takes to take the cab off and, uh, where we go from there. So the cab, <clears throat> there's them five eighths bolts up here. You take out, they're just a short bolt, take it out. And then your lifting bracket bolts in secure make sure you got it bolted in secure and you're safe that's that's the big thing um it's really not that difficult to get the cabs off it's just kind of uh take your time and look at stuff <clears throat> so on, on the right hand side so your your cab mount is here um your battery i take the battery boxes off just get them right out of your way that opens up a little bit of room but you got cab here, and then it kind of goes up and over. So like this fitting here, yeah, that one's a little pain in the butt. This one's a little pain in the butt. This is a bolt here. It's a There's no nut. It's just a 3 8 bolt coming from the bottom side. It's supposed to be for your ground strap that runs up to the cab. <clears throat> and then your throttle bolts right here, it's just a turnbuckle that, that goes here. Then you got your kill cable and your tack and your wire harness. And then your steering lines. Um, you got your big bolt here. If they have a cotter pin up on the top side, a castellated nut with a cotter pin, you can try and fight that cotter pin. Otherwise, we just put the big gun on the bottom and wrench on top and just shear the cotter pin off and then just replace it with a lock nut. Because uh, when you tighten them down, you don't just, you know, torque the crap out of them. Um, so these are kind of a pain in the butt. So if you lift the cab up a couple inches, you know, save this for the end. You lift the cab up a couple inches. This gets a little easier. Uh, but you got your two-speed here. You got your brake and differential, your transmission linkages. <clears throat> All your linkages from the three-point come up to the cab here. I take them off up at the cab. Since the three-point is coming off, <clears throat> I take them off of that as well. Um, but that, you know, that's about it for this side. Fairly... Fairly easy. You got your heater hoses going up there. Um, the other side, there really isn't a whole lot to it. Um, you would have your air conditioning lines coming through here to some couplers. Uh, you got a brake line on this side. Um, you got your, depending on the generation of tractor that you're doing, you've got a steering line back here by my fingertip. And then your PTO and clutch cable or rods coming down. Um, de again, depending on your tractor, some of them that PTO linkage is up top here, kind of a pain to get to, and <clears throat> some of the plumbing is a little bit different. Um, throughout all the all the different 30, 40, 50, 55 Soundguard cabs and all the different models, it, it's different, but it's the same, and uh, so then. Then we just start lifting the cab. You know, your your starter harness right here. The harnesses, I just pull back and uh, I just kind of tuck into the cab. So when you lift the cab, they're not dangling so much. <clears throat> then when the cab is up, we got it on blocks because your shift linkage is dangling down. Is dangling down there. So you can't just set the cab down. You don't want to ruin all your shift linkage. So we... We set it on some cribbing there. So now while it's here, 
we can pop the windows off we can pop the seat out gut the interior and we can we can work on the cab while it's here it's nice and secure excuse me <clears throat> so my next step my goal today <clears throat> kind of having a weird day but <laughs> the goal excuse me the goal today is to get the cooler out of here get the radiator off um and maybe get that three point off get the transmission drained see what other stuff uh, maybe we get that hydraulic pump out um i might end up just giving a bath right here move my ladder in the toolbox get that radiator and cooler out I might kind of wash the pump area and then wash wash this clutch housing a little bit. I don't know. It'll all get washed up at some point, so I guess it doesn't matter at this point. It's just nicer to work clean, I guess. Um, but, yeah, get that radiator and cooler out. And then I'm deciding, uh, I don't know what I want to do. If I want to leave the engine so I'm rigged up right now with the hoist <clears throat> to take the engine with the side frames roll it forward put some jack stands and blocks underneath the engine take the clutch housing with the engine then then that would give me my transmission on the stand then i can set this down on blocks or i still have to decide yet or you know or you can take your pump drive coupler off with the radiator out. You take your pump drive coupler off. You can unbolt your side frame and put the hoist on the engine, roll the side frame forward, set that on a stand, <clears throat> then come unbolt the engine, set that down on some blocks, then come and unbolt the clutch housing. You know, we can go around that way. It, it's no wrong way. There's no right way as long as you're careful and you're safe um, and just take your time. For if you're, if you're a farmer just doing this cab on your own time frame, take a day. If it takes you a day, that's okay. Uh, if, if it takes you the whole day to get it, you know, if you start at 8 in the morning and by 4 in the afternoon you are setting the cab down on cribbing, perfect, perfect. Um, because it's, that, that's, a, you know, there, nobody gets a trophy for being fast. Um, but yeah, there, there, there really is no wrong way to do a lot of this stuff. It's just, does it work when you're done kind of deal? There, there's some things that you can do wrong on, on other parts of repairs. Don't get me wrong there. Um, but taking that cab off, take your time and be safe. That's the right way pulling this engine there's three ways four ways five ways to do it none of them are wrong um yeah then we got to start making a parts list of of things we're going to need i want to pull that transmission cover off because i want to maybe i just start at the three point get the three point off and that shift cover off and then eventually the radiator cooler who knows who knows all right guys thanks for watching well, I ended up taking the three-point shift cover off. I was just kind of curious to get in there and see what things look like. Everything at the first initial glance looks really good. Without a doubt, we'll be putting synchro plates into the synchronizer. Uh, B-range gear has to be replaced and probably the shift collar that goes down there. Um, so I just started here. Next, I'll go up to the, the radiator and stuff. It's kind of a weird day for me for time. So I didn't want to try getting into splitting and then half not being able to get it done. The three-point itself is to take off it is extremely easy. I got this this band so the arms are up. Um, the arms will be up here and that. And then I just use a ratchet strap to come from here up to the hoist and then just use that to kind of level it out. Uh, the only pain in the butt is there's a couple bolts under here that don't come out they, they they don't fit to come out um the couple under here they do come out or they uh, the nut the nut on some tractors can't come off until you lift it up that whisker uh, i believe this one by rights you take this plug out but if you lift it up that half inch you can get that bolt out 
without taking that plug out. Um, going back on will be a different video because there's a couple key things. The only thing is when you lift it, it has to be level. Don't let it twist around and just lift it straight up because you do not want to damage your load sense finger. You don't want to damage that at all. So you just want to make sure you lift it up and then pull the dipstick. Because the dipstick tube sticks down below the housing. So I set it on a 55 gallon drum and the bung hole is right there. <laughs> I am Cornholio. I need DP for my bung hole. <laughs> but the dipstick sticks down three or four inches. And uh, yeah. So the drum, the drum works nice to support him. My little table, some extra table space since the, the 4440 engine and cab is taking up that whole cart. I'll do my transmission on this makeshift table. Um, so yeah, oh, fairly straightforward, pretty simple. Um, next thing a guy should do is pop this off. Then there's a cap behind here that the hex shaft rides in and this hex shaft locks into the end of the crankshaft and that's what drives your pump. So that's why on the 30 series, you can hold the clutch in and you don't lose your prime. But on the 20 series, they don't have the shaft. The pump is driven off the top shaft. So when you push your clutch in on a, four, on a 20, 10 or 20 series synchro transmission, if you hold the clutch down, your loader will eventually stop working. So then you got to click the neutral, let your clutch out, and then everything comes back to life. But enough yip yap. Um, let's get on that front end. There we go. The engine's on the ground. Front end is away. Um, that actually went really well this time. <sighs> got a heck of a mess to clean up. Uh, oil's dropped on the rear end, so that can drip over the weekend. So, um, I just got to transfer everything over. Um, the, I got to get the starter, the alternator, the block heater. I got the new turbo back on the shelf to get mounted up. But otherwise, all the accessory, your water pump, you know, all that stuff. Get it rebuilt and get onto this engine. Um, get that perma clutch off. Get it pulled apart, inspect the plates, and uh, get him rebuilt. And then we'll pull this. So that's how your perma clutch works. And so when you let go of the clutch pedal, this piston comes out and engages the clutch. So it's the opposite of other. So when you push in the clutch pedal, this goes in. And uh, same thing for the piston back here to turn on. Well, that, no. The back one is like normal, so to turn on the PTO, this one would come out to activate. But your two speeds on the, in here, um, so this is a, a synchro transmission. So that's your old eight speed out of the twenty, out of the forty twenty, the old mystery shift. You just got a two speed in here to make it sixteen. So next week we'll get um, this clutch housing off. Get everything cleaned up around here. Get that clutch housing off and, and set down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of work to do, but it's kind of nice to, to actually see it coming. Um, what I wouldn't mind doing is setting that clutch housing, using the cherry picker to come in and grab that. So if we have to use a hoist to trolley it, trolley across the hoist to get it out here, and then with the cherry picker, bring it out here, give it a good bath. Same thing, um, get the axles off, and they can go outside until uh, the transmission's done, and then roll the transmission out there and give that a bath. And same thing with that front end, roll that front end out into the shop and uh, give that thing a good bath. Yup. Yep. Boy, what a heck of a project. We still uh, we still got tearing down to do. We're a long ways. We're a long ways from going back together. <laughs> Holy crap. What did I get myself into?